Most of the population of Western Australia lives here on the Perth coastal plain. I'm standing in part of the original bushland that remains at Jandicott, an outer suburb of Perth. On my right is Jandicott Airport, headquarters of the famous Flying Doctor Service. And on my left is the advancing urban sprawl. I spent my youth just a few kilometres from here. My introduction to nature study began with the building of cubby houses in the nearby bush. However, it was only when I began to study the local vegetation as a student that I gradually realised the wonderful and varied ways of nature in solving the problems of survival. In fact, this is an excellent example of a finely balanced ecosystem in which all the organisms are dependent on each other. Ecologists call this type of vegetation Bankshire woodland. Woodland, because of the abundance of moderate-sized trees, whose canopies do not form dense shade. And Bankshire, because the vegetation is dominated by species of Bankshire. The Bankshire woodland is located on the deep acid sands of the Perth coastal plain. Dune vegetation and eucalypt woodland to the west are a feature of the alkaline sands fronting the Indian Ocean. Swamp vegetation and eucalypt woodlands to the east are the characteristic vegetation of the heavier soils at the base of the Darling Ranges. The ranges themselves are covered with valley vegetation and eucalypt forest. These four parallel zones of vegetation extend well to the north and south of Perth. And Jandicott, just outside the metropolitan boundary of Perth, lies in the middle of the Bankshire woodland zone. There are five species of Bankshire in the buffer zone around Jandicott Airport. The most abundant and the best known is the firewood Bankshire, Bankshire menziesii, whose blooms are among the most beautiful of all Bankshires. The flower buds are a deep pink with a striking silver edge and are aligned in vertical rows. The mature flowers are orange, tipped with yellow. Humans aren't the only ones who find its blooms attractive. The stick nest ant, Chromatogaster conifer, likes the nectar of banksias, and it is not at all keen to share its meal with other animals, or a careless hand for that matter. The ants spend their time at the base of the flowers where the nectaries are located, whereas the pollen and receptive stigma are at the tip of the flowers. This means the ants cannot get at the pollen and are only robbers, not pollinators. The real pollinators are nectar feeding birds. Banksia menziesii flowers in early winter. This banksia is always found together with the candlestick banksia. Banksia attenuata. This species produces bright yellow candlesticks over summer when other banksias have stopped flowering. The candlestick banksia has much thinner leaves than the firewood banksia and its shinier leaves reflect light and heat, which might otherwise scorch the leaves during the hot dry summer. The third species is the bull banksia, Banksia grandis. This is one of the tallest of the 72 species in the Bankshire genus, reaching a height of 15 metres. It has very large leaves which are popular in dried flower arrangements, with the serrations running right to the midrib of the leaf. The bull Bankshire flowers in late spring to early summer, and its grey blooms, which turn yellow on opening, are the grandest of them all reaching a length of 30 centimetres. A species looking very much like the candlestick banksia is the swamp banksia, Banksia littoralis. However, its spring blooms are not held above the canopy like the other banksias, but instead are hidden inside the canopy. This, however, does not stop birds from seeking them out for their nectar. 
Another distinctive feature of the swamp banksia is the white, velvety underside of the otherwise dark green leaves. The final major species of banksia on the Perth coastal plain is this rather tall, holly-leaved banksia, Banksia alisifolia. Now this species flowers in spring and occurs on quite moist but not waterlogged soils. As its name suggests, Banksia lisifolia has holly-shaped leaves with spiny edges. It is not obviously a Banksia, as it is covered in quite small clusters of flowers, rather reminiscent of the closely related genus Dryandra. However, like all true Banksias, the lisifolia has a short woody spike which bears the flowers. And between these flowers are woolly bracts which are always present in the genus Banksia. Most plants on the Perth coastal plain occur here on the old, dry, deep sands of the dune systems. However, in the pockets between the systems, we find quite a different habitat created. When we see the soils, we notice that they have mosses on them, indicating that the soils are much moister here, and there's a high level of humus in them as well, and they have a clay subsoil. This creates quite a different habitat. The vegetation is quite distinctive as well, and quite different species are found here. For example, this Melaleuca priciana. This is Melaleuca priciana. Note the fine, wiry leaves on the twisting branches blackened by a recent bushfire. In fact, Melaleuca means black and white in reference to the colour of the powdery bark. In fact, this paper bark, as it's known, serves to protect the plant from fire and heat. But also, it contains large air spaces between the many layers of fine corky tissue. And this provides an air passage down to the roots and enables oxygen to reach the roots even under waterlogged conditions. Melaleuca priciana bears masses of white bottle brush flowers in early summer. These are pollinated by many types of insects, especially wasps. The pattern of vegetation changes across the old dune system. Banksia woodland occurs on the deep sands. Melaleuca priciana grows in the moister pockets between the dunes. The peaty swamp areas with clay in the subsoil support sedges and wire rushes. Banksia littoralis occurs around the edges of the swamps. Banksia alisifolia and Banksia grandis grow on the slopes of the dune system. And Banksia menziesii and Banksia attenuata occur on the driest slopes and crests of the dunes. One plant which is not so particular about soil type is the famous West Australian Christmas tree, Nutsia floribunda. In November, it transforms from a uniform grey-green canopy bearing inconspicuous buds into masses of brilliant orange flowers which cascade over the plant to reveal one of the world's most spectacular flowering trees. It is pollinated by insects, many of which have been displaced in Banksia woodland by the introduced honeybee, which is very efficient at removing the nectar and pollen. The flowers occur in threes, only one of which has a fertile ovary. This means only one winged fruit develops in each cup, held in place by three bracts between the three wings, until dislodged and dispersed by a strong gust of wind. <laughs>